Hello guys and welcome back to another Paint on a tutorial. Uh, sorry about the long hiatus of videos, however I have been taking care of other things outside of YouTube. However now I am back and there should be a uh, video coming, uh, this video, as well as a video next week. So um, I'm back to my usual schedule, uh, thank you for subscribing. I've got like over 600 subscribers now which just amazes me, wow that is incredible. I'm glad you're finding these tutorials useful. Okay, so without further word, let us begin the tutorial. So the first request comes from someone who is telling me that I should make more Photoshop style tutorials in which I edit uh, facial features like eyes and and, uh, and the body and the head and like distort the face and you know make someone look um, more thin than they are or more fat than they are uh, than they actually are. Yeah. Um, well, you guys have to deal with the fact that um, Paint.net is not Photoshop. Photoshop is designed specifically for really professional edits, like removing someone's head, you know, <laughs> Paint.net doesn't have airbrush or really professional features, but it does have tools that can make sort of things close to Photoshop um, professionalism. Um, and today, uh, to showcase that, I'm going to show you how to make a Boris Johnson bubble head. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so what you're going to need for this is a picture of some random bloke in a suit, and Boris Johnson's face. So you're just going to need a face and a torso, uh, a body, you know, a pair of legs, a couple of hands, well not a couple of hands, just a pair of hands, uh, a couple of fingers, yeah, you know, you get the story. So um, what you have to do is you actually have to cut the face off uh, this this dude. I'm not sure who this is, but I apologise for cutting off your face. Uh, you're also going to need to cut out his actual body, so all that remains is the suit uh, and no head. Okay, so let's do that, and I'm going to speed that up. Uh, you're actually going to need to do this with the lasso tool. Also, you can actually have a go at removing um, this area partially. Yeah, the way you can actually determine whether you can remove stuff is um, the contrast between the two colours that um, are next to each other. So, for example, if there's a black here, and there's like a grey here, it's not likely that it's going to remove everything. But because this is white, and this is like a completely different colour, it's unlikely that we'll be able to remove a lot of it. And there you go. Okay, so we've removed the majority of the side of the suit. Uh, there's a bit of distortion there by the hand. I think we can remove that. And we're going to do the rest using the lasso tool. Okay, so I've actually removed the background of the suit. Oh, actually, there's um, some stuff here that I need to cut out. Um, so let's do that. And here we go, it's complete. All that remains is the torso and the hands. Uh, and all that's left is to cut out Boris Johnson's head. Now, the only portion of the head we need to cut out is uh, the skin and the hair and the eyes. We do not need to cut out the suit. Uh, so all that needs to remain is the face. So let's do that uh, using the uh, lasso tool and the magic wand. Okay, so let's attach the head to the torso. Now, um, previously Boris Johnson's head was on top of the torso layer. You have to make sure that now it's below the torso layer by clicking this little move layer down arrow. So now you need to select the, um, the head of Boris Johnson and uh, click the move selected pixels tool and sort of drag it. To make it look a bit more natural, you can actually um, sort of cut out a bit of the collar to make it go round Boris Johnson's head in a little bit um, of a smoother angle. Oh, I think I think we're almost actually done. Uh, and now what you need to do is actually uh, make Boris Johnson's head look like a bubble head. So you need to go to Effects, Distort, and you need to go to Bulge. And here you go, now, now 
drag it to the middle of the head and as you can see if you drag it roughly to the middle of the head it actually makes him look like a really cool bubble head so now select the head again using the move selected pixels tool align it once again slightly and there you go you got yourself a Boris Johnson bubble head but we're still not finished because using shift control and N we need to make a layer between the head and the torso so you need to raise your brush size and actually make a little black line here starting from the edge of the head and running smoothly under the torso line uh, just below the neck now once you finish that go to effects, blurs, Gaussian blur and blur it out slightly to make it look as though the suit is casting a shadow onto the neck to make it look a little bit more natural and attached and now attach all the layers using image flatten and here you go you got yourself a Boris Johnson bubble head yay wow that looks very odd indeed um, I'm also going to do a Photoshop style tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to change the colour of an eye next um, in the next episode. So the next request is a quite simple one and someone is asking me how do you mark the middle of your image with your ruler. Now um, he's asking me how do you mark the middle of your canvas, you know you want to make a geometrically accurate drawing, you know maybe something, some sort of a cool design involving circles or squares or whatever and you know you want to make it symmetrical, you want to make it equally sized on each side and you want to know the middle of your image and now th this person is actually asking me how do you mark it using the rulers which is this thing right here. Now you can do this but there is a much quicker way and you can actually do this no matter what size your canvas is and the way you do this is get your line tool up um, get it on a, on a fairly low size and now zoom in onto your image go to one of the corners and zoom right in and drag a line to the side opposite and now if you go to the middle Drag a line out all the way to the opposite side. Drag another line. And another line from the middle. You're basically making a, like a spider web shaped structure. Which you're going to use to mark out the middle of your image. Now you do actually need to hold down shift here. So you have to be careful for that. So that the line you make is completely straight. And now you can actually delete these marker lines which um, help you draw it. You don't need to delete them completely can just delete the majority of it and we're almost done and there you go that's the middle of your image that's the center of your image where that little X is where we left the uh, marker lines that's the um, that's half of your image and there you go uh, four four sides of the image you can you can do more with this basically you can you can mark out other halves by drawing X's on onto these rectangles but yeah that's basically it so thank you for the request and now for a slightly more complex request now uh, actually this is not from one person but actually a lot of people ask me this request and that's the reason why I'm doing this um, in the in a video right after um, they asked me so uh, this request is asking me how do you make curved text so you know you, you want to make a cool design and you want to have the text curve around a um, an ellipse now the way I actually do this is um, there is no tool for this you can use a plugin um, which are basically things that you can add you can add tools to paint.net by downloading plugins from the internet but I prefer not to do that and I just prefer to make you know m m make um, make use of what's here and you know that's what I'm doing well, that's what I'm gonna do right now so there's no tool to make curved text in um, in, in paint.net there is in Photoshop but not in paint.net so for this you have to make a curve around which you're going to base your actual text. So make this curve. Oops. Okay. So now you have to make your text. So I suggest you go to a new layer for this, and you actually have to um, uh, select a, a random font. I don't know. Uh, let's select um, Show Card Gothic. Then uh, let's do the Yakobelt logo. So I'm going to type Yakobelt right here as an example. I'm going to drag it to the middle so that I have a good starting round. Okay, so now th this is actually the quite tedious part. So you have to make a new layer and actually use the lasso tool to surround one of the letters 
and click Control X to um, I'm sorry, wrong layer. Click Control X on your second layer in which your text is to cut it. And now you have to paste this onto this layer. Hold down your right mouse button to twist it and align it with your curve. And there you go. Now go back to your text. Surround A with um, with your lasso tool. Cut it using Control X. Make a new layer and paste it once again. Oops, no oh dip. Uh, there you go. And now just repeat this with all the letters. I know this is quite a tedious process, but well, this is the only way to do it really. And there you go, there's your curved text. Now you have to delete your templates, which is your bottom layer, or at, uh, or at least it should be. And now click image, flatten, and uh, that should take a bit of time. And there you go, there's your curved text. It looks quite nice. Now you can, I don't know, edit it, you know, maybe um, hold down control, highlight all of them, uh, highlight all of them, click your uh, gradient tool, go to the linear gradient, uh, go from this color, to, and mark out a secondary colour of white and maybe just uh, do a cool little design and you know, you can, you can do all sorts with this, it looks, qu it looks quite cool maybe you can make a new layer um, copy this onto the top layer go to adjustments, use that saturation drag down your lightness and drag the layer down below it and you know making like a little drop shadow yeah you can you can do all sorts with this that's quite cool so thank you for the request i'm afraid that's it for this week guys next week i'm going to be showing you all sorts i'm going to be doing another photoshop style tutorial as requested i'm going to show you how to change the color of an eye i'm going to do a bit more layer work in more detail it's going to be all good so uh guys see you next time bye <laughs>